Hi everyone, Jasmine here from Feeling Nifty Painting Tutorials. Today you're going to learn how to paint this easy hydrangea flower with some cotton swabs or q-tips and bubble wrap as an optional step. For the full written step-by-step -step tutorial, you can check out the link in the description below. All right, let's get started with the supplies you're going to need for this painting. In terms of materials and supplies for this hydrangea painting, you're going to need an 8x8 or 10x10 square stretched canvas. Um, and in terms of paint colors, I'm using ultramarine blue, phthalo green, cadmium yellow medium hue, quinacridone magenta, Mars black, and finally, titanium white. In terms of brushes, I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush, and I'm using a size eight round brush, a pencil to trace in our hydrangea flowers, paper towel, a jar of wa clean water, some Q-tips, and optionally is some bubble wrap that's been cut in some circle patterns. So the first step is we're going to take our three quarter inch flat wash brush, moisten it in water, and we're going to grab some of our phthalo green, and we're just going to dab that phthalo green in spots all over our canvas. So just small spots. We don't need very much of the phthalo green. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up some of that yellow on the other side of the flat brush and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to add dabs of that yellow all over. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to take, we're not going to clean off our brush. It's okay if the paint mixes. Uh, we're going to take that white and we're just going to add big blobs of white all over. So we want more of that white on our canvas um, compared to the yellow and the green. So we're just going to add big, big blobs of it all over. Okay, so now we're just going to make sure our brush is nice and wet. And we're just going to use up and down strokes and we're gonna mix that paint right on our canvas. And that yellow and that green and that white is going to make a really beautiful mix. And that's gonna be our background for our hydrangea flowers. And if you find there's not enough paint on your canvas, you can pick up a little, either a little bit more paint or you can wet your brush a little bit more so the paint um, gets a little bit more fluid and it's easier to glide across your canvas. So you're just going to simply use those back and forth strokes, up, sorry, up and down strokes to get that paint on your background. And it can look streaky, as streaky as you'd like. Or if you want a more blended look, you just keep on working that paint a little bit more. And if you're going to be displaying this on a wall, then you go ahead and paint in the, the sides of your canvas now as well. I'm going to apply just a little bit more white because this is going to dry a little bit darker. So I'm going to add a little bit more white into certain areas and I'm going to re-blend. Okay. So once you're happy with the background, um, we're going to leave this now to dry for about five to seven minutes and then we're going to come back and we're going to start with the hydrangea flowers. The next step once your background is dried is to sketch in your hydrangea shapes, which are basically simple circles um, with a pencil and also your jar or vase shape. So the next step is we're going to be painting in the base layer of our hydrangea flowers. Now. You have two options here. I'm gonna show you a method of how to use bubble wrap to create really nifty texture um, onto your base layer, but that's also not necessary if you don't have access to bubble wrap or if you find this step a little bit cumbersome because it can get kind of a little bit messy. Um, we can go ahead and paint that base layer with our, with our paint color uh, straight away. Now for the first flower, I'm gonna work on the top um, flower here, which is the largest, and I'm gonna make that a purple flower. So to make my purple color, 
I'm, I just have a bit of ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta on my palette and I'm just gonna mix those two colors together and it's gonna be creating a really beautiful uh, purple color. So once it's mi well mixed, you're going to be grabbing your round brush and I'm going to take one of my bubble wrap here that's going to fit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the bubble wrap um, portion facing up. So the flat portion of it, it's gonna be facing down and the bubble portion fa uh, facing up. And then you're just gonna take a little bit of paint and you're gonna paint on top of your bubble wrap just to get a good layer on. So once you've, co you've covered all your bubbles on your bubble wrap, put the paintbrush down and then we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna be using it like a stamp. So we're gonna be placing it down where we want that pattern to go. So I'm gonna put it up here in the top flower and then I'm gonna press down to make sure that paint gets on the canvas. And then we're just gonna lift off. You can just like peel it away. And then once you peel it away, you're gonna get a really cool texture. So I love that. It's almost like a snake skin. Um, but with this painting in particular, we're gonna be covering it up. So that pattern is not really going to show through, which is why I'm gonna give you the other option of just painting it with a, with simple paint. Uh, but it is very nifty and really cool to, to learn and to know that you can use bubble wrap to create textures in your art. So the next flower I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna show you the method without using the bubble wrap if you prefer that one. So I'm gonna use this flower here, um, that's gonna be my second flower, and I'm gonna paint that with pure quinacridone magenta. So it's gonna be a, like a nice vibrant pink in the end. So I took some quinacridone magenta and I'm just taking my round brush and I'm gonna pick up some of that color and I'm just gonna paint it in. And you just simply fill in basically the inside of your circle doesn't have to be perfect at all because it's going to be, it's just a base layer. It's going to be covered up with flowers afterwards. So just get that paint on the best you can. And even if it goes outside the lines, that's fine too, because in real life, flowers are not perfect and hydrangeas are round, but they're not perfectly round. So it's always nice to have a little bit of freedom and not make it, not to worry about perfection which can be sometimes hard when you're painting because you want to get it just right, but it's nice to go with the flow and have fun instead of worrying about perfection. That's good. So basically your two options to fill in the rest of the flowers is to either use this bubble wrap method or you can paint it directly with just your round brush and your simple paint. So for this, um, flower here. I'm just going to go ahead and clean off that brush. This flower here, I'm going to do, I'm going to do make that a blue. So I'm going to use my um, ultramarine blue. I'll put that down here just a little bit. And the base coat of all these flowers are going to look really saturated and dark right now, which is what we want. We want th that's going to give us a little bit of uh, shadow in the end to a depth to our flowers. But as we work on the layers, we're going to lighten it up quite a bit. So I'm going to pick up some of that ultramarine blue and we're just going to put that ultramarine blue right into this flower and you can put it over top. You can either make this flower um, underneath the purple or you can make it over top. So here I'm going to, for now, um, I can change later on. Uh, things change as, the, as your painting progresses. Uh, so I'm gonna make this one over top of the purple for now. And we'll see where it takes me in the end. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get that on and that's good. Now for this color here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just wipe off my brush. I'm going to make that almost like a lilac color. So I'm going to take some of this um, purple here and I'm going to mix just a little bit more of our pink. So it's more like a pinky purple. So we get a little bit of variation to the base of our flower. We can play around with that as we work with the layers too. And for this, I can go back and do my bubble wrap method. So in the end, we can compare uh, both the methods. Okay, so I'm going to put that bubble side down and I'm going to press and we should get our nice bubble pattern. So for the next la layer, we actually don't need to wait for the paint to dry. If it's dried, that's fine. Uh, but if it's a little wet, it actually will work in our favor because we're, the, the paint uh, layers, it's nice when it blends a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my purple flower first. 
And what we're gonna do now is we're going to take whatever purple paint we have left on our palette and we're gonna add just a bit of white to it to lighten it. This is our first layer. So we don't want it too light. We want it just a bit lighter than the original base color. So I'm just gonna take that white and mix, just take a little bit over here that palette knife down. So now for the Q-tip method, you're just gonna grab a bunch of Q-tips. It doesn't matter how many you have at this point. Um, I'm going to choose four here, but you can choose five or three. And we're just gonna dip that in the paint that we created, paint color we created. And we're just gonna dab over top of it into our flower. And that's just going to create our second layer in on our hydrangea. So if you want, you can leave some of that dark color showing through as well, or you can cover it right up. And you can come right along the sides of the other two flowers. And now I've chosen that I'm going to paint over top of this blue one. So the painting is already changing from what I planned in the first step. go so I'm gonna leave a little bit of the dark color showing through at the end like that I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that white and we're gonna lighten it even more so this is gonna be a little bit lighter than our purple we have right now So you can see here that it is looking, you can see the contrast between the two. So I know that's a good, that's a good uh, color of purple, good tint of purple. Put that down, I'm gonna pick up my Q-tips and I'm gonna dip it in this new color. And I'm gonna come, now I wanna have the darker um, of the, the color at the bottom more and it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit lighter at the top of the flower because the light is coming from the top in this painting so I'm gonna focus on adding that that light color at the top of the flower and you can come a little bit outside of their the circle as well just to give some flowers coming outside because again in nature things are not perfectly symmetrical like that. Okay, so now we have, I'm gonna add just a couple more at the bottom, not too many, because I want that darker color to be focused at the bottom, since that's where the shadows are gonna be cast. And now I'm going to finish up with our lightest color. So I'm gonna put my Q-tips down and I'm gonna get a little bit more white and we're gonna lighten it even more. So this color of um, purple is gonna be like a pastel, very, very light, close to closer to white than it is to that purple. Okay, so I'm just gonna reuse the tips I had uh, for the last layer, and I'm gonna grab some of that really light purple, and I'm gonna focus m even more at the top of the flowers here. I'm gonna create, create little dabs. And if you want to get even more precise, you can actually just grab one Q-tip and you can just dab it because that gives a little bit more control over where that white paint or light purple paint goes. And that can be helpful when creating that final highlight color layer. You can add little dots here and there, a little bit lower in the flower, but not too much because again, we wanna keep that shadow at the bottom. If you find like you've done too much and you've hidden a little bit too much of those darker colors, don't be afraid to go back in and grab some of those darker colors and bring them back into your, your flower. The beautiful part of this technique is it's you're working in layers, so you cannot do it wrong. You can always go back. If you added too much of the dark color or too much of the light color, you can always go back and fix things. And that's why we're doing one flower at a time so your paint does not dry out. So all my three shades of purple are here on the palette and I can go back and add as much as I want. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna put my Q-tips down. And next I'm going to work on my, my pink flower. So with that, we used our quinacridone magenta. And our first layer was pure quinacridone magenta. The second one is gonna be slightly lighter. 
So I'm going to add just a little bit of white to it. Kind of clean off my palette knife. You can also mix with your brush if you'd like. Um, I just find the color mixes better with palette knife, so I just use that. But if you don't have a palette knife, go ahead and use your brush to mix the, the paint colors. And I'm going to use three Q-tips this time. Why not, right? We can experiment with different amounts. I'm going to pick that up, and we're just going to dot them all over our hydrangea flowers. I'm going to come outside the lines here a bit too. Get some of those flowers coming outside. Not being scared to keep it perfectly round. Here. Okay, I'm going to leave that um, and put my q tips down. Now we're going to create our third uh, shade or sorry, tint of that pink. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that white. And we're going to mix that in. Grab my Q-tips and I flip them around. And we're just going to go over. And you don't have to let your paint dry, which is the um, another great part of this painting because sometimes having to wait for your paint to dry can, um, it's not always the funnest thing to do, I guess. So it's nice just to, when you're in the painting mood, you just want to paint and not have to paint and stop. So these, this, this, this the hydrangea flower, it actually works nicely when the paint layers, the different ones blend a bit. So I'm going to add just a few at the bottom, a few outside of the lines. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna put my Q-tips down. I'm gonna create my final layer. Oops, a little bit too much white there. That's all right, we can save it for the next flower. So I'm going to take just a little bit of that and that pink. So again, we want to make sure that this one is closer to white than it is to the pink. So it's a very pale pastel color here. And I'm going to grab a single Q-tip here just so I have more control. And I'm going to paint that light color with my single Q-tip. So at the bottom too, but not too many. So we want that shadowed, those darker colors to be more present at the bottom of the flower and more of the lighter ones at the top. Okay, happy with that. So now we're gonna move on to the blue, the blue flower here. So for that, I am I use the ultramarine blue, and we're gonna grab a little bit of white to create our second tint of white. I'm running out of white already. Lots of white in this painting. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not gonna use all that blue to see how much I need to make it a little bit lighter. Ultramarine blue can be really intense and a little can go a long way. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna add just a bit at a time and get to the color I want. That way I don't have to waste more white to lighten it back up if it gets too dark. You kind of learn about your paint colors and how saturated they are, how strong they are, the more you use them. Um, and you realize like some, some paints are, you need a lot to change the color when you mix and some you don't need as much, but that is uh, gained through just using your paints and trial and error. Okay, so I like that blue. Um, I'm gonna grab some Q-tips, I'll grab three here. And I'm gonna grab some on my the ends. And I'm going to come and just add them all over. And this blue we had added with that second method, which is just painting a base layer on. And I saw here in this, this pink flower, I like it much better than that flower because some of that really, that, that first layer is still showing through in the bottom. And here it's, it's, it was a little bit harder to keep in. So I actually might go in in the end and add a little bit of that, that darker purple in. But so far, I am liking that second method. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and I'm going to lighten that even more. So that's a nice, so 
lighter color. Happy with that. So I'm going to grab my three Q-tips here and I'm going to dab it in that medium color and focus on the top part of this blue flower. And still letting some of those paint layers show through in the end. And working a little bit outside those lines as well. For the smaller flowers, um, it can you can actually just sw swap over to using one Q-tip. It can give you a little bit more control over where those those flowers or those dots go. And just a couple of the lighter ones at the bottom, not too many. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now we're going to create our lightest shade, which is going to be close to white. So I'll add a little bit more right there. Okay, nice and has a much more, more contrast than it did before. So I'm gonna pick up a single Q-tip here to do my final touches on that blue flower. So I have a little bit more control over where those flowers or those uh, dots go. And I'm gonna focus at the top, adding them more at the top of the flower. Some coming outside of those lines. Add a couple here and there at the bottom. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now we're going to move on to creating our kind of like a mauveish color of that hydrangea flower. So now we need to create our second layer, which was slightly lighter than that initial base coat. So I'll add some white. So I'm going to take some of that white and mix just a little bit of it to create a lighter mauve. Okay, so that's good. My Q-tips, dab it in, and then we're going to just use our Q-tips to get in that pattern. I find painting with Q-tips is actually really relaxing and it's really easy. You don't have to worry about brush work and brush skills. The simple thing you have to do is just dab down. My first cotton swab Q-tip painting was my cherry blossom tree painting, which is also on this channel. I'm gonna link it um, in a link below. And it's, it was also very relaxing to paint with the different uh, layers of pinks and reds with that tree. Okay, so this one I'm going to have um, below the purple and below the pink. So it's going to be behind both of these flowers since this is going to be my focal point and then this is going to be the second biggest. So I'm happy with that. Now we're going to lighten it even more with even more white. Okay, that's good. It's a little bit unmixed there, but you know what? The streaks will actually work out perfect because it's nice to have different color variations in our flower anyways. So I'm gonna pick it up with my Q-tips again and I'm going to add them in. So with this bubble wrap method, it definitely covers that first layer a little bit too much. That's what I'm noticing for sure with having these two flowers done now. Okay, so now we're going to do our final layer of our, of our mauve flower. So I'm going to add in, mix in even more of that white to create a really pale, really pale mauve. And I'm going to pick up a single Q-tip now. And so I have a little bit more control for where that goes, where those dabs go. Add just a couple at the bottom. I'll focus mainly at the top of this flower. So you can see here, both of them are purple. 
but this one has more of a warmer purple um, and a lighter purple um, color because we added a little bit more of that magenta into the mix and this one has a little bit more blue and it's a little bit cooler so you can create different color variations with using just simple so in this we just use basically two co uh, two colors we used blue um, and quinacridone magenta mixed alongside white to create these three or these four different colors. So you don't need lots of colors in your collection to create different variations. You just have to get practice and um, just practice mixing them and see what colors you create. That will save you money and supplies. So the final step for these hydrangea flowers, we're going to be adding a pure white highlight to just the tops of the flowers, but we want to make sure that the paint now dries before adding that final highlight step with white paint. So while we wait for our hydrangeas to dry, we can actually move right into our vase. Now, um, for our vase, I'm going to show you a, a picture of the finish, a finished painting. Um, I've added this kind of like a chinoise vase with like a dark uh, blue pa star pattern in it. Now, to create that dark blue, we're going to be creating our stars to begin with. Now, to create that dark blue, we're going to take our ultramarine blue and we're going to, it's going to clean up my palette knife here, and we're going to mix in just a tad black. So, I'm using Mars black here, but if you, you can use any black you have on hand. So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and mix in just a little bit. Like black is even more saturated and a little tiny bit goes a really long way. Good. So now I'm going to grab my round brush. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that dark, dark blue. It's like a navy blue. And you can add a little bit more water to your brush to make it fluid if it's not flowing on, onto your brush. And if it's too thick, because we want to get nice flowy paint here. Okay, so now we're just going to create little star shapes in our vase. So here you just kind of go with the flow. There is no right, no wrong way of doing this at all. You can add as many points to your stars. These are not, they don't even have to be stars. It can be any pattern you could think of. If you have like a nice vase at home, um, you can actually use that as your inspiration. And it makes it more customized and more special. The painting would be more special in the end. So you can add little, you can add little stars or big stars. So for the ones I'm creating, I'm gonna show you here. So it's I'm doing one line, and then I'm gonna do another line across it, and then another one right through. Okay, so once you're happy with the amount of pattern that you've added onto your, your vase, vase, tomato, tomato, I'm not sure if I said it right. <laughs> Um, you're going to add the bottom part. So here you can also have fun and kind of go with whatever you want to do here. But here I'm going to put a little border around this bottom part of my vase. And another border. Like that. And I'll just do a thicker one at the bottom. Okay, so that's our first layer of our vase there. So now we're gonna wait for this to dry. All right, now when your pattern is dry to the touch of your vase, we're going to create a wash over it. So there's a layer that's gonna be covering it, but we are still gonna see that pattern show through. So to do a wash, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up your round brush and you're going to bring some water on your bristles into that dark blue paint that we just created for the, uh, the pattern on our jar. And we're going to water that paint down so it's like a liquid consistency. So it's like water. So it's going to be very thin and the pigment is going to be thinned out too. So it's not going to be as opaque and it's going to be more transparent when we put it on our canvas. So when it's really thin and liquidy, like the consistency of water of a thin liquid, we're just going to take that on our paintbrush and we're going to brush over it on our, 
on our jar and it's going to go on um, not as dark so you, you should still see the pattern of the stars below it or whatever pattern you've drawn on and we're just going to go as close to those hydrangeas as we can so you're going to just brush that a thin layer of that wash on and what this is going to do is going to add a little bit more dimension because we're going to go ahead after and paint white over top of this and um, that white is not going to hit in all the places because we're going to try to get as close as we can to um, around the patterns and the jar but some of that blue is going to be po poking through below and it's going to create a really cool um, effect and give the jar a little bit more interest and dimension so anytime you want in a painting that you want to have like a more of a translucent layer over top of a pattern, for example, or anything else, like even wording, you want like a layer to go over top, then you can just create a wash uh, by adding water like we just did and creating a really thin uh, version of that paint. And it's going to go on very translucent, almost like a water paint, a watercolor paint. Now, once the wash is dry to the touch, you're going to pick up the same round brush and some white paint. And we're going to go ahead and fill around the patterns and, of, of where that wash went. So we're going to try as best as we can to go around those star patterns, but we don't have to get really super close because some of that wash color can still show through uh, below where we don't get with the white. And that's going to give us a little bit more interest and character to this jar because this jar is not going to be a perfect jar. It's going to be a little bit more rustic and there's going to be uh, parts where some of that blue still shows through. So just have fun here and try your best just to get around that those patterns. I've also added some dots here, so I'm going to do my best just to get around those and close to the flower. But because we've added that wash below it, um, it doesn't matter as much if we get super close to it because it's going to give us a little bit, cast a little bit of the shadow so we can leave a little bit of that dark blue wash uh, below. So I'm finished with my jar here, but I want you to see how it looks up close because it is still, you can see the paint strokes um, and you can see some of that blue still showing through and it's not perfect here. So I just wanted to mention that you don't have to get too stressed out about getting the white perfectly um, along the sides of the pattern, um, even if you cover some of the pattern. And I actually let some of that blue below of that wash show through on either side, uh, just to give extra dimension. So you don't have to worry too much here about getting the white over top of your pattern perfect. It actually looks better when it's a little bit more, a little bit messier, and you can see the paint strokes and you don't get perfectly with um, alongside that pattern because we did that wash, blue wash at the back, and it's gonna give us that really cool effect below the white so don't worry too much about getting it perfect the jar perfect um, just have fun and add the white where you want to and also you can add a pattern at the at the bottom of the jar as well I just added just a couple of polka dots there but you can add whatever you want another line um, or diagonal lines you can have fun here and create a jar to your liking now once you're happy with your jar we're going to move on to the final part of the hydrangea flowers which are adding the final highlight petals so to do that we're just going to grab a q-tip and we're going to grab some pure white paint so this is the white paint i used for my jar so i'm going to just reuse that and we're just going to add some pure white highlights to some of the top flowers of our hydrangea. So we're just going to add a few of those. We don't want to add too much because we don't want to cover all that beautiful color of our hydrangeas. So we're just going to add about, you know, eight to 10 maybe, or a tiny bit more of those pure white highlights to the top of our flowers. You can add a little bit less to the smaller ones. Okay, so that is good, I'm happy with that. 
So the final step of this painting is to paint in the foliage and the leaves around our hydrangea flowers. Now I've gone ahead and used a pencil just to roughly sketch it in and if you have an idea of what kind of foliage you want to do you can actually do that right now as well and just sketch it in. If not you can actually just follow along with me while I paint in my leaves. They're very simple shapes so it should be fairly easy to do even without a pencil sketch. So the first thing we're going to do to paint in our leaves and foliage is to create a green color in our paint. So we want different greens. So we're going to create a green by mixing some ultramarine blue and I'm going to be reusing the palette. Now this paint here is dried so it's kind of like a plasticky feel to it so I can go ahead and um, reuse that and just mix my different color paints over top and it's not going to mix since the paint below is dried and it's not going to reactivate. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and I'm going to take some cadmium yellow medium hue. Okay, I'll take my palette knife and I'm going to mix some green by adding that ultramarine blue with that cad yellow. So that's going to create a really nice, deep, rich, um, warm green color. So we can use that to paint in some of our leaves. So what we'll do is we'll grab our round brush. So we're going to re uh, grab our round brush and I'm going to grab some of that paint on it. And we can paint in our leaf shape. So this leaf here, I'm going to actually come a little bit on top of my vase here and the leaf shape is just a simple elongated oval that's pointed at the end so you can just create that simple leaf shape like that and we'll paint them the same color and then we can create varying tones of that of that green um, different tints by adding white so for now we're just going to focus on getting that leaf shape on with that green color we just created. And we'll create another leaf right there. I like to have like leaves and threes. I don't know what it is about the number three odd numbers. It just looks more pleasing to the eye. There must be a rule somewhere. We're adding things in threes. Just makes things look nicer. Okay, and then I'm going to add a couple of leaves up here. And they don't have to be perfect at all. Just try to get a rough leaf shape in there. So again, they're kind of like elongated ovals that are pointed on, on either side. So basically I'm just taking, uh, I'm just putting the leaves in the little cracks between all the hydrangea flowers. That was my, um, kind of thought on where I wanted to put the leaves, but you can put them anywhere you want. If you have even a bouquet of hydrangea flowers in front of you or in your house, then that would be a great way to get some inspiration on the design of your bouquet as well. I really like this green that's created with mixing the ultramarine blue and the cad yellow medium. It's a very warm green and perfect for foliage and creating leaves. Even tree, it would work really nice in trees as well. And I'm going to add another leaf over here. And then I've created these kind of long stems with tiny leaves on them just to give some variation. So what I'm going to do for these is I'm just going to create a long line using just the tip. So I want the paint to be very fluid. So it just kind of flows for my paint, uh, sorry, for my paintbrush. And I'm going to use just the tip of that, that round brush to paint in a line, a long line like that almost like you're using a pen. And then to fill in the leaves, you're just gonna create little tiny leaves like that, just like one, with one stroke. So you're just going to, to start at the stem and then move out with one stroke. I'm gonna do that along this little vine here. And then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So you're gonna come, it might be easier if you, if you flip around your canvas. I'm gonna be, easier to get those leaves there. There we 
go. And then I've added another similar one um, because it's nice to add a couple of them in different places. So it, it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. I like to add a little bit more variation to the green color to add um, a little bit more depth um, and make them look a little bit more realistic. So what we're going to do to create, so we're going to create some lighter tints to, to this green now. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my white that I used earlier, titanium white, and I'm going to mix it in there. Just the side, so I have two of those two versions of the green now. I have a lighter green here, and then I have that original green that we used for the base of the, the, the leaves. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to clean off my brush because I want kind of those paints to blend a bit on the canvas. And then I'm just going to add some strokes of that in my leaves. So you can do them anywhere you want. You can do them at the top of the leaves to mimic that highlight color, or you can do just a couple of strokes here and there throughout the whole leaf. It's just going to add a little bit more dimension to it. And if you find that color is not um, as bright as you want, just go ahead and add a little bit more white to that mix to get a brighter version of it. You can have fun here and create different tints and versions of that green. So I'm just adding a few strokes, like one, two, and three. That works nicely, just to give us some variation in those leaves. We can do the same thing for these little tiny leaves on the vine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's all gonna come together in the end. And this painting is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this hydrangea flower painting tutorial and give it a try. It's a really easy, fun and relaxing painting to make and it's especially great for beginners. Until next time, stay creative, kind and nifty my friends.